Hi, it's Gary with 2N. We've taken some time to put together this brief tutorial for you, demonstrating some new enhanced capacities with respect to the 2N Access Commander. During this session, we'll be showing you the Enhanced CSV Import tutorial. The purpose of the tutorial is to show you how to import users using CSV files and automatically populate the 2N Verso LCD display for a real-time display of updated user information. Let's go ahead and get started. So first off, we'll talk about some basic assumptions and the concepts behind this implementation. First of all, CSV capabilities within the 2N Access Commander have existed but have been greatly enhanced within version 1.08. This tutorial assumes that you are running version 1.08 of the Access Commander and a minimum version of 2.20 on the 2N Verso. We will also assume the following concepts for this tutorial. We'll be using a single geographic location, which we'll refer to as a company, and specifically the ABC company. Within this location, we have two buildings at that site, each one in possession of a single 2N Verso having the LCD display module. And we'll refer to each of the two buildings as Building A and Building B. Further, We'll create three groups of users. There will be those users associated with building A, and hence the first verso, those users associated with building B, the second verso, and finally, a grouping including all users, regardless of the building they belong in, for such areas as pools, gymnasiums, or front gates. Please note, this enhanced CSV capability differs from the CSV option found under the Company Data Import heading and is a license feature. Contact your 2N Business Development Manager for more information. And finally, one last concept. As we'll be using automatic periodic synchronization of devices, it's important to understand the flow behind this. Users are associated with one or more groups. Devices are associated with zones. Using the access rules, we create an association between groups and zones. Once the access rule has been created, any change to user information will immediately be shared via the group zone association. Let's go ahead and log into our 2N Access Commander, creating a new session, and review some of the information here. We see immediately the dashboard area, which spells out to us the number of companies, groups, users, devices, zones, and access rules we currently have in place. We also immediately have easy access to any of the event logs, system logs, device state, access logs, etc take a look at our company settings. Here we can see the ABC company associated with zones building A, building B. Next we'll go to our users. We see currently by default we have a system administrator, however no other users. In preparation for the CSV import, we've gone ahead and created our three groups, Group A, Group B, Group C, each associated with the ABC company. We can see immediately that the user count for each group is zero. Next, we'll visit devices and see that we're currently monitoring and have included two 2N Versos, which we've referred to as Building A Verso and Building B Verso. Both Versos are currently online. We'll look at our zone programming and see we've created a zone called Building A, Building B, and as you'd expect, in the Building A zone is 
the building a verso and building a zone is associated with the ABC company. I'm not using any time of day restrictions, so no time of day profiles have been created or associated with this particular tutorial. Finally, we'll look at our access rules here, and we can see by clicking on the first one that in fact the users associated with Group A are also associated with the zone Building A, which as you may recall from a few moments ago, is associated with the Verso related to Building A. The same is true for Group B. Now we'll go down to the Settings tab. We'll click on Synchronization, and this exposes the capabilities afforded to you using the new Enhanced CSV import. First of all, if we want to keep the CSV file in a living fashion on an FTP server, we could go ahead and define the address as well as the credentials to access that FTP server. Also, if we want to invoke automatic synchronization, for example, allowing the automatic import from either the FTP site or a network location on either an hourly, daily, or weekly basis, we could define those parameters here as well. In our case, we're just going to go ahead and synchronize from a file. Let's take a quick look and see what the format of that CSV file is. Here we can see a standard Excel spreadsheet saved as a CSV file and the column headings which I'll strip out prior to importation. So here we see a unique identifier associated with each particular user. Next, the name that will be displayed within the user's button information as well as on the LCD display. The company the user is associated with and an email address for each user. If an RFID credential is uh, available for a particular user, that string would be populated in column E, and a PIN number for access to the area or areas of the building could also be programmed within column F. Next, column G, column I, and column K represent the three number positions where this user could be reached at. We can set the uh, calling up using column H and column J as group calls. So for example, ringing two numbers simultaneously. It's assumed if no value is in place here, it will represent a value of false, and the user will be called at the first position, then will roll to the second, and ultimately to the third if a number is available. We next have the virtual number. So if or a visitor were to walk up to the display and enter this four-digit extension, for example, this will map to a particular user and begin the calling sequence directly to the numbers specified. And then finally, using semicolon delimitation, we can specify which group or groups a particular user belongs to. So we'll select Synchronize from File, select the particular file, and click Synchronize. If we look at our group information, we now see we have 18 users in Group A, 18 in Group B, and 35 in the overall group. Let's pull up a camera here, monitor our two versos. And we see we have no users programmed currently on either verso. However, in just a moment, the automatic synchronization will take place. We'll see the displays update. And then when we revisit the particular LCD display, we should see a distinct difference between the two. Displays are now being updated. We'll go ahead and touch the screen once again. 
And now we can see that the building A on the left starts with apartment 101, whereas building B on the right starts with apartment 1103. Any modifications to the spreadsheet and subsequent importation will immediately create a change in the appearance of the display reflecting the transition of a user, either modification or deletion or addition of additional users. Thank you very much for viewing this tutorial. We hope you found it helpful.